Hey, Coach, has got a fantastic guest. James Vint is an elite uh, Texas high school coach. Get this, high school coach, author, blogger, video course producer, consultant, uh, coach and I actually, I, I put out a, a all hands on deck alert. Uh, I was trying to get a, a kid of mine uh, recruited and coach was super nice and he got, connected with me on Twitter and, and just gave us a ton of, uh, of tips on how to uh, spruce up his highlight video to get some looks and immediately uh, within a day he got a, a full offer so I know that's one of the resources that we're going to talk about at the end but basically we're going to do three things I want coach to tell us about himself because he's uh, uh, super interesting and, and he's got a new venture going on and and then he's going to share his favorite RPO with us and then he's going to talk about all the different resources he has available he's got books he's got uh, courses on on coach tube uh he really has a heart to help coaches and uh and buddy i sure appreciate you being here with us man it's great being here i'm really honored well let, let's start it off uh just tell us about you well, i grew up in the midwest my dad was a coach and uh played for a hall of fame high school coach and craig parkinson in uh, akron iowa and then i went to college and played for a hall of fame coach larry corber at northwestern college in orange city a small school uh, with real good athletics and ended up transferring to Briarcliff University to play to finish out my baseball career and uh, after that went out to the uh, east coast got on the wrong plane that's what I like to tell people and spent eight years in the Bronx in New York City coaching football we got to turn a program around and uh, ended up having an opportunity through that to get a college offensive coordinator job and spent a couple years at the college level before I met my wife uh, down here in, in Lubbock and I moved down here and coached high school football now in Texas for 11 years. Uh, the last five, I've been at Estacado High School, which is one of the top 4A programs in the state. And uh, really, it's been a phenomenal opportunity to work with great kids and great people. And, uh, and I've enjoyed it. I've, I've really, I, th I think that I've been blessed in that I've been able to, to move around the country a little bit. I've been able to see football in different areas. And, and I'll tell you this, there's great football in every state in this country. That's awesome. You, are, you want to talk about your, your new gig coming up? That was pretty interesting going into the corporate world. That's right. Well, a private equity firm reached out that, uh, that owns some education technology companies, and, and I'm going to be helping uh, school district personnel better utilize these different software solutions. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but I'm still going to get to be involved in coaching just in a little different, a little different way. And, and uh, I'm really excited about that. And I'm, I'm excited to, uh, I think one of the things that they, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. I do that once in a while. But, uh, but as coaches, we don't give our family enough time. And I found that over the last several years, I had really been neglecting them in a big way. And uh, my daughter's six, and she brought up that I, I'm never at her soccer games. I'm never at her gymnastics. I'm never at her dance stuff. And, and I felt like I needed to be a better dad and husband. And when this opportunity came up, it really worked for that because I still get to, to follow my passion of coaching just just going to be in a little different way well that's that's awesome that uh you get the you get the big pay raise and you get to spend more time with the, with the family so that that's fantastic and i'm excited for your new adventure uh but i'm excited about uh the 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 x and o's things and the recruiting things that you put together and and uh and you're going to share your favorite uh rpo with us you know that's kind of the uh that Whenever we have uh, on the channel anything that has RPO listed into it, that always has a bunch of views. So uh, coaches are excited about it. And, and me personally, we took the RPO out of our offense this, this year. We, we played in the spring this year, and we're putting it back in for the fall season uh, just because we missed it so much. It's just one of those where you feel you got the pin last when you got the RPO. So uh, take it away, Coach. Tell us, uh, Teach us your RPO. Well, the biggest thing with RPOs, and, and it's funny you mentioned that, how everybody gets excited about it, because when I first started, so we were, we were real early adopters of the pistol. And when I first started talking about the pistol at clinics, and then I also would do like an hour on empty, because we used to love to get an empty. And there'd be five coaches in the room. And a couple of years later, it's a packed house. RPOs, the first year I talked about RPOs, I think there were 10 coaches in the room. Two years later, there's 200. You know, it just, it, it's how our game works. But my favorite RPO, and I think RPOs are option football. I'm an option coach. That's my background. Midline load, veer, isotope, crap, and I'm happy. 
Uh, but what we what happened was we had gotten into the gun. We're running the spread, and we have a quarterback get hurt. And we have a non-running quarterback. How can we still read guys? And that's how this all started with us. We had our pre-snap RPOs, and then we had our post-snap. So pre-snaps based on alignment, post-snap based on movement of a defender. We can read a second-level defender for our post-snap RPO. We can read a third-level defender. My favorite RPO, and the RPO that I think you can put in at every level, we've run it from the seventh grade level up. We run a unified system. So our seventh grade, eighth grade, nine, everybody's running the same offense. The first RPO that I recommend coaches put in, because I think it's the easiest read for the quarterback, it's a simple catch and throw. There's nothing worse on an RPO when you get a pull read and you throw and you either can't make the throw or you have a kid that can't make the catch. So what we want is something that's going to build confidence in our players and teach them how to read, how to, for a quarterback, it's really important because he's got to get his eyes in the right place and then he's got to get his feet in the right place to complete the throw. So we run an RPO that really has two variations, phantom and flame. All right. Phantom, we're going to run this to a three by one or th a three receiver surface. It doesn't matter what you're doing on the other side. When we're running Phantom, it's off of an inside run action. When we're running Flame, it's off of an outside run action. And it's away from where the three receivers are. It can be any run play, but what we do is we're going to install this with what we call four down to Mike. What does that mean? Or four down to Will, rather. We're going to block four down to Will. So we're going to block the four down guys to the Will. So we're going to get a combo to the Will, and then we're going to have everybody else based up on their man. We're going to leave the mic unblocked. Number three receiver is going to run a stick route, but we're going to, on this route, we're going to turn inside, not outside. So really it's a six-yard hitch. We don't want him to bend it inside because then he's going to end up putting the, even if the mic fills, He's in the window. So we want a six yard, a good six yard hitch route turning inside. Our number one and two receivers will do either a fast screen off of it or we'll run an out and a go, just like you would on a stick concept. And I prefer to run the out and the go. Our quarterback and the running back are gonna mesh. The quarterback's gonna read the mic. If the mic plugs, the quarterback is going to pull and throw. What happens for Mike here is this puts him in conflict because let's say there's a one and five technique to that side. The Mike is now getting a combo on the one to the wheel and an out block on the five. If I'm coaching linebackers, that's down block, out block. That's, that is trigger downhill right now. What are we going to get? We're going to get an easy throw. If Mike hangs, he does not trigger or he steps to three, we just give the football. We've blocked Mike. He'll make the tackle, but it'll be at four or five yards, and that's a good football play for us. And occasionally, he'll just take off to number three. So that's, that's what we call phantom. Now what we're going to do off of that, off outside action, is we're going to have flame. So we got phantom and flame. Flame, we're going to run stretch away from the three-man surface, and we're going to read the, wheel line, or the Mike linebacker the same way. If Mike flows, we're going to pull and throw. If Mike hangs or does anything else we just give the football so it's a really simple rpo that we can run now here's the cool part you can run this out of multiple formations so we can get in a three by one set and run it we can get an empty and run it now it's with the quarterback so now the quarterback's going to look at number three if the mic opens to three the quarterback now is running the football so you get in a three by two set now you're probably going to get a five-man box to begin with Anytime we get a five-man box, our offensive line makes what we call a basketball call. Basketball means we're five on five. So they'll just, the center's just going to go basketball, basketball. And the offensive line now is going to account for all five box defenders. So if we get a three-two box, an odd front, it's an automatic basketball. So he's odd, 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 basketball, basketball. If it's an odd stack, we're just going to block. Now we're going to block the three down guys. We're going to block the wheel and the mic. Our, and we're going to read the Sam, that third stack backer to the trips. So it's a simple RPO. It's a really easy read for the quarterback. When we run it, we average 6.8 yards a run. We average 17 yards a throw. Because typically when we catch that route, now we are able to burst vertical. A little variation off of it is we'll start to get people, especially teams that like to play too high, 
they'll try to trigger that safety down. So they'll see the RPO, they'll see the mesh, that safety sees three on a stick, he starts to come down. Now we tag it and it becomes basically automatic play action. We're going to do this, our O-line doesn't know it, they're blocking the run. Quarterback's going to put the ball in the belly of the back, he's going to come up and he's going to give a shoulder and we're going to turn it into a hitch shake or hitch and go, a double move. So it's just something to have an answer. I think that's important when we install anything that we have answers to defensive adjustments. Now, a lot of guys will say, all right, because we had to learn the hard way. What do you do when they go three over three? They rolled it, they roll down, they play one high, and they put three guys over trips. Well, now your RPO is taken away by alignment. So the quarterback now is going to turn to the running back and he's going to say, me, me. That tells the running back, you're now blocking the read guy and it's quarterback ISO. But what the quarterback's going to do is he's still going to look at the RPO. Here's why. We'll get people that will roll down and show three over three, and that guy over number three is going to bail. So we can still take the RPO. But it's a really good way. you got to have that me call. And I think something that is really important, and I've made this mistake in coaching. I actually just wrote a blog post about it today about having too much installed. I'm going to be following that up with another blog post about, because I say, I talk about not being good at anything, about what we call a fully installed play. See, too often these days, we're trying to do too much stuff. It's not like the old days. And I'm sure you grew up in my era where run it again. We're going to run it till we get good at it. Well, now we're always trying to put stuff in. Everybody wants to do a three-day install and we're getting too much stuff in and we're not putting it fully installed. And what I mean by that is when you install a play, you install the adjustments and the answers because you have to have adjustments based on what defenses are going to do. So they're going to have an answer and you've got to be able to counter that answer. So that's what we talk about. We talk about fully installing a, a concept. So when we install Phantom and Flame, we fully install it. Here is the base concept. Here are the answers. And then here are the compliments. Here are the things we're going to do that look like it but we're going to take advantage of something like, for example, if we start getting that safety, like let's say they play one high, but the safety's rocking over number three, we're going to run number two on a post. So it's play action, but it's off of an RPO, if that makes sense. So you're showing run action, you're showing an RPO, but you're throwing based on their, their uh, reaction to the RPO. So I think that's what we mean by fully installed, but that's my favorite RPO because you can run it from, a three by one or a three by two set. You can use a tight end, no tight end. You can run it from 12 personnel. Uh, we lo I love running that on the tackle over set where you go tackle over and then you have three dudes outside of it. And I thought with your tight end to the single, I think that's a really cool way where you're running an inside run, your tight ends blocking a dude that he can handle. But now you've given them an extra man on the surface. They're going to have to walk someone down and usually going to get an uncovered guy. So it's a pretty cool little concept. And, and uh, I've had a lot of coaches tell me that that's one concept that they absolutely love. Yeah, it sounds like a million bucks. Do you, do you, do you have, by chance, a, a couple clips of it? I do. Can you, can you share, uh, share your screen and, and show us yeah. real quick? Let's see if we can get this pulled up. All right. All right, so now we're actually blocking dart right here. So we're blocking a dart play with the tackle. Poland, who we're also reading. So we're accounting for a guy two ways because we still have our tackle pulling for him. But you can see the play side linebacker up here triggers. This play side backer, the trip side backer triggers. So that tells the quarterback, I'm going to pull the football and I'm going to throw this. You're going to notice something else. And I think this is important. This concept, if you have a right-handed quarterback, you can throw to the left. You don't have to always throw right. And in fact, it's better to the left. Here's why. When the quarterback opens to mesh with the back, his feet are in position to throw the football right here. So it puts him in a great spot and it plays with the defense because they expect right now that we're reading this safety since we open right. They think we're running a, a, an RPO concept off the safety, but we're actually running it off the wheel. And it's tough because that safety's hanging, worried about the post, so he can't trace three. Here's what it looks like from the end zone. And it's just a simple throw and catch. I think I've probably got it versus, here's another one. 
Same type of look here, exact same deal. We're going to open right, and we're going to throw left. And watch this linebacker. He's real. This guy is really well coached. Watch how quick he triggers on this. And that gives us just an easy throw. And that's what I love about it. It's such an easy catch and throw. Now, when he's detached, he, he's bending slightly in on into the box. Yes. Not too much. Just a very slight. He probably overdid it just a little bit. You know, we really don't want him bending that much because we don't want him in the window. You know, here we're getting into empty and we're running it now. We're three over three. So the quarterback knows I'm probably not throwing this. So now the quarterback ends up running the football. Everybody else thinks it's phantom. Pretty simple little concept. And that's what we love about it is we can run this from anything. Here we're running it off of quarterback counter. So we're blocking quarterback counter, but you're going to see this stack linebacker in the 3-3 three, three stack. He's going to open up to number three here. So we're checking to this. And watch that backer. See, he's already cheating that way. Look at him. See him open to three? Mm -hmm. That play side backer opens to three. Now we're blocking counter. And we've got a puller with no one to block. We've got numbers. So you can take anything. Now, we're, we're typically, when we first install this, we're blocking four down on it. It's not until we get to the point of we're comfortable with it that we'll start running some quarterback run out of it. But when you're running your quarterback, now they have to defend five wide and still your one back run game. If you're running it with your running back being a lead blocker, they've got to defend all your two back runs. That's what I really love. And here you can see the Phantom. They're playing a, kind of that Iowa State tight front defense. And we jack this up. This tackle should be locked right now. He kind of screws this up. But the quarterback's reading the stack backer over here. Well, that stack backer hangs over three. So the quarterback is now just going to give the football. And he gives the football, and now we got numbers in the box. So it's just a, it's a great, simple, simple way that we can get our skill guys some really quality touches. You know, here we're running it again with the quarterback. He's reading this linebacker. So we're running counter over here. Reading this linebacker on the play side to the trip side. And we're running the little stick route. And that linebacker filled. So the quarterback threw the ball. We'd like to see him get it out just a little quicker. He held that just a little bit too long. But again, you can see this is really simple. Yeah, I love it. I want to steal it. So like that time... He, he did. He shaded towards the box just a hair. But when you're coaching them, are you telling them to run a hitch or are you tell them to slightly bend to the box? We coach them to run a hitch, but they get a little bit of room. We used to have them bend it hard. And this is from 2018 when we were turning it a little bit harder. We don't really turn it that hard anymore. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. We don't really we, we don't we didn't bend it quite as much. If I pulled up our 2020 film and 2021 film, you wouldn't see us bend it as much as really just hitch it up. Okay. But so we, your coach and you tell them to hitch it. Just a little more. Bending it themselves. Is that what? That, that they'll what bend that it a little bit. Yes. Because they think when we teach it, we teach it as we're replacing a guy. Right. So they get that in their mind. We have to be careful with how we, how we coach them. Mm -hmm. But that gives you a really kind of good look at, and how it actually looks on film. And let me see if I can pull up the empty for you. All right. So now we've got it out of empty. We're three by two now. So we got three up top, two down below. We're going to block basketball with the O-line because we got a three-two box. This is actually late in the game. We're in four-minute offense right now. We're trying to get a couple first downs and end this thing. So the offensive line, they're blocking basketball. The quarterback takes the snap, and he's reading the Mike backer. So we've got the hitch route here. And you can see he's, he's just kind of – and what we teach him is just to tempo that route. What we don't want is having him run too far vertical and run into a safety. So we want to tempo it. So he just tempos that hitch, and then you can see he kind of bends it. 
just a little. That's not a bad bend, though, because he's trying to work away from this second defender. Quarterback sees that linebacker trigger. He knows it's an easy throw and catch. And that's our running back that we usually put as number three. You want to put a dude there. You know, you want to throw this to your, you, you know, your tight end if he's a really good player. But we're trying to get this kid touches. You know, he's a really good football player. This year, we have a receiver going to TCU. He was the guy we threw it to. You can see it's, I mean, that's, that's easy. And here we're running it again. And he should have thrown this one. He should have thrown it. This is a throw read. But again, we're blocking five on five. And you can see it's really hard on the defense. They think that they've covered the RPO. The safety's coming down. But what happens for us is the quarterback now is free to run. So we feel like a lot of times when we run that, we're going to be right no matter what. And I asked our quarterback, I said, Jalen, what, what were you doing there? And he said, well, Coach, there was two and a half minutes on the clock, and I knew if I get a first down, we win. And I didn't have to throw it. I knew I was going to be able to run for it as soon as I saw the defense. I said, okay. So he did a great job of looking, showing, and then it just turns into quarterback draw. So you can't get too mad at a kid for thinking. When we put this answer. in in 2014, what's that? I said, that's a good answer. When they tell you that, that's a dang good answer. He's, he's thinking football. Talk when about your, uh, what's the verbiage you're telling your O-line, your guards in that situation so that they don't just shoot up the field and get illegal downfield? So when we teach this, we put cones. What we tell them is we put cones at three yards, and we really get them used to that three-yard deal. And when they get to three yards, post up. So you're not going to see our guards just running up field. You're going to see them taking, we tell them to take uh, zombie steps, pounding their feet, almost like they're working their duck walk. Once you get to three, post up. Because if that linebacker's worth anything, he's coming downhill anyway. If, if that linebacker's bailing, don't chase him, post up. What we tell the quarterback or the running back, once they get the football, make a go call. That tells the offensive line, we're running, you go. Now you can climb. And we don't always get the go call. The quarterback does a really good job most of the time because he wants, he don't want to get hit. But you can see here, like our right guard, he's not in a rush. You know, and he kind of catches there. But the, when we installed this in 2014 and ran it a lot, we ran it 27 times on the season. We averaged 25 yards a throw and 22 yards a run. I screwed up, should have called it more. But we didn't want our quarterback. Our quarterback was about 145 pounds, and we just didn't want him taking the contact all the time. Uh, but we, we ran it in opportune situations. And I think this is a great first down and third down call. And then also second long, because you're typically going to get a defender that's thinking pass, but now he gets a run look. And a lot of times we can get them just not fitting their gap very well. And we're going to get an easy throw. I love it, coach. That is, uh, that is everything you promised. It's elite, uh, elite, easy, good throws and catches, easy runs. That's everything I could ask for right there. When I could, you know, I should have pulled up a whole bunch because I could have shown you a clips of this from as far back as 2006 and just how simple it was. And um, I love it for our quarterbacks. I love it for our running backs. The best part is for our offensive line. Uh, we had a really young line this year, but 2019, we went 12 and one. We beat a 5A division one school with four times as many kids as us. Um, we beat them the first game of the year and we ran phantom probably eight times in the game and we had a 40 yard gain we had a 36 yard gain we had a 28 yard gain we had a 30 yard touchdown run uh, it was a big part of our success and our offensive line the crazy thing we won that game our offensive line had one kid that had game experience it was a really young group and they you know we were 200 pounds at the guards we were really undersized and our center was about 245, and five, but he was short. Uh, we didn't have a big elite offensive line. And that's what I like about this is it takes some pressure off of those guys. And then it takes advantage of well-coached teams. 
people say, what messes this up? Well, when they're just better than you, obviously. But then sometimes we struggle with it against teams that aren't very well coached. Now, down here in Texas, we face mostly really well coached teams. But when, we, when I was coaching up north, you're going to have, you know, especially in New York City, you're going to have four or five games against elite, really well coached teams. You're going to have a couple games against teams that are somewhat coached. And then you're going to have a couple of games where you're going to play people where you don't know what they're going to do. You just don't know. They're not very well coached. And that's nothing against them, just how it is. Those guys mess us up because they don't give you very definitive reads. So. I, I've, I've had that happen too. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Coach, absolutely fantastic. Now, now coaches have seen what kind of stuff that you're, you're teaching. Talk about your resources because you've got books, you've got video courses, you do consulting. I already said you helped me a whole bunch and just, I don't know, it seemed like it was 10 minutes of uh, back and forth uh, text and, and you completely reshaped my kid's highlight video and immediately he got results because of the tips you gave him. So, so tell us about your resources. How do we get there? I'll, I'll put everything in the show notes, but you talk us through it. What, what do you have to, that's going to help coaches? Well, you know, uh, first things that I recorded a bunch of videos with coaches choice. So there's some of those that are out there. Um, I haven't done one with them for eight or nine years. So those are, those, those are a little more dated. Um, but then I did some coach tube courses last year and I've got a pre-snap RPO course. I've got a post-snap RPO course. And that one, what's really cool about that is I take, obviously I teach Phantom and Flame and, and I teach uh, our, from Empty. And, but I go through how an RPO is put together. So basically it helps coaches design their own. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. Here's how you can fit it to your team. Here's how we did it. Here's some thoughts for you. Now you go build your system. And, uh, and I think that's really cool. And a lot of coaches have told me it helped them a lot. I also have a course. The most popular course I have on CoachTube is how to communicate on game day. When, and I know every coach here has had times where you've had to tell people to shut the heck up on the headset, where you get chaos, where you just get a lot of noise. We have a system. We have used this for years. This is exactly who's looking at what. So I teach guys, here's what you need to have your box look at. Here's what your field guys look at. Here's how you communicate all those things during a game. Here's our process between plays. This is who's talking when. Here's how we handle our business meeting. between. So we call our, when you bring the guys over to the bench between series, we call it a business meeting. Here's how our business meeting works. This is how we structure it. So our kids know exactly what to, to expect. And we actually practice that during the season. So before our first game, before our first scrimmage, we've already had business meetings in practice. This is who's talking. This is how we break out to our position groups. This is how the coaches handle all of it. There's no confusion. Everybody knows what they're, you don't have a situation where I go, hey, hey coach, uh, what'd the backside corner do? Uh, well, don't make anything up now. You just say, I didn't see it. I was watching the game, not doing my job because we all do it. It happens, but I, but I give a system on there. Um, I what have a couple that one called coach. Cause I want to make sure I leave a link to that one. elite game day communication, building a system for elite game day communication. That's a really, really just, it was, I, I enjoyed making that. Um, I'm getting ready to do one on ball security, how to teach ball security, how to coach ball security, why you coach ball security, because you got to have the football to score. Um, uh, the course that, uh, that I just put out was on recruiting. So over the years, I've been a recruiting coordinator at the high school and college levels. Over the years, I've had a lot of parents reach out to me and ask questions about recruiting. And I decided just, to, and I go do seminars. Schools have called, I'll fly in, I do a seminar for, I'll do a seminar for maybe a group of five schools get together and we'll do a seminar. We've done an eight hour seminar, all right? Well, I said, we have technology. No, we don't need to do that. We can just do it right here. So I put together a course. It's about six and a half hours of instruction on everything from how to market yourself, how to use social media, how to build a social media profile, important terms that you have to know. How does the recruiting process work? How do you get evaluated? What measurables do you need to have for each level? How do you build a highlight film? How do you market your highlight film? How do you choose a college? How do you pay for college? Everything's in there. So I put that out. Um, and then I've got some books on um, 
on Amazon on RPOs. And uh, I've got two books on, uh, on the pistol, 101 pistol run plays, 101 pistol option plays. And uh, I just wrote a book also kind of on my, about my faith, you know, uh, on my faith's journey called finding faith. And I've actually had a lot of coaches tell me that, that that was really impactful uh, because I just talk about some struggles that I faced and some ways that, that I found that I can overcome that. Um, so, so those are kind of some of the things that I've got a blog at coach Vint at uh, dot blogspot.com. And um, that's something where I love to, ju I just go in and if there's something I'm screwing up, I'm going to write about it. It helps me fix it. And then I can help other guys maybe not make the same mistake. And, uh, and I've enjoyed the, the blog. It's, you know, I've, I've, I think I'm up to about 750,000 views now. And it's just, a, you think about it, that's kind of crazy. Um, but it's really neat because it's a great way to connect with coaches. I had a couple great coaching mentors. And one thing they, I, I asked him one day, I'm like, Jerry Campbell's one of them. I said, Jerry, why do you pour so much into me? And he was coaching at Round Rock High School in Westwood, Texas at the time. And he said, because I believe in you. But here's what I ask. He said, you do the same for others. Pour into them share your knowledge. Now with me, I'm not sharing a whole lot of good. I'm sharing how I screwed stuff up. He shared a lot of good, but, uh, but I try to help guys as much as I can. Well, coach, that's that number one, it's an incredibly uh, impressive. And, uh, and you do, you have so much good information out there. And, and when we, when we sign this off, I want to get with you because I want to get the links to put in, to, into the show notes, but thank you so much for doing this. Uh, obviously elite high level coach and, uh, and obviously have a heart for coaches and, and want to help them get better. And I, I appreciate everything you do. And I appreciate you coming on here tonight. You bet. I'm honored. I appreciate you doing this and, and uh, the way that you use this, this, uh, this podcast show to connect with coaches. Thanks, coach.